My name is TJ Gamble and this is Bruzel. But what does it actually take to get one of these in the state of Alabama? It's all told we spent about 400 bucks, but this is what we got. That's a good whiskey. There's a lot going on there. All right. That is bad for... That is not at all what I was looking forward to right there. Let's just go ahead and move over to that one. How about that? Um, I apologize for being three minutes late, but... Um, we had lots of technical difficulties. Y'all might have even noticed the thumbnail that I rolled right before this wasn't even the right one. That was last week's stream's thumbnail, but we're like only three minutes. Like, when y'all consider how much crap I had to go through to get this live, three minutes is pretty good. Y'all let me know if you can see me. Let me know if you can hear me. It's going to be just me today. Jill, my, apparently my good luck charm is audio is low. Um, it looks like it's high on the output. Um, so all good. Anybody else have low audio? The levels look fine over there, so not seeing anything a bit low. Well, let me see. I can crank it up just a bit here. Hold on. Crank it up just a bit. It might have got bumped down. How's that? Is that a little better? We good there? Is that too much? Y'all let me know. Hopefully that's a little better. But um, sounds fine now, good go, okay, awesome. Apologize for that, but I went to boot up the machine. I gave myself an hour to get this stream set up thinking everything was good to go and the machine wouldn't even boot. So I had to reset the BIOS, do all sorts of crazy things and then it was just catastrophe from there. So appreciate everybody joining. Um, looking forward to a good stream, had a good Monday. Um, tried to buy a car this morning, it didn't work out, but we were trying to buy the ultimate bourbon hunting vehicle, and unfortunately, it sold before I could get to it. So, turn it on. Turn it. I turned the computer off and turned it back on a hundred times. It that did not work. So, but we ended up not buying that one. We may buy a little bit bigger Highlander, though, a little better travel machine, something reliable with airbags that won't kill us if we hit anything. So, we were actually looking at a Southern Comfort conversion. 1990 Chevrolet Suburban. So square body Suburban with the high top conversion, which is much cooler than a van. Beautiful shape, but it sold this morning before I went and got it. So it's Tuesday in England. Well, welcome. Um, sorry that you're up so late. I need a pour. Let's get some pours going. I had several things I'm supposed to talk about today. I've been in such a scramble to get this stream going, probably gonna miss half of them. But we are going to go through my haul from the hunting trip that we just posted. This is the Ohio hunting trip. And I have I bought five bottles while I was there. One of them is gone. It was that Goose Island um, bourbon barrel aged stout. Those are so delicious. We drank those immediately. Um, and But we do have four bottles to go through here. So what's going on, Jeffrey? How's it going? Paul from New Jersey's in the house. Got Owen from the UK as well. We got a lot, we got an international audience here. Well, I appreciate it, that's, that's awesome. Um, that we've got folks from all over the world. What's going on, Tim? Have I tried, yes, I've definitely tried some new riff. The lands of the Weller. Hey, I ended up with a Weller. Like I said, the weird, I got put myself in a weird position in that video. If I'd have found a Weller, I would have left with no Weller. But because I didn't find Weller, I got a Weller. I don't know. I hedged my bets and I won. Rodney from Texas in the chat. Alberta. Nice. Canadian. Three bottles during my family vacation. I am actually leaving Wednesday and I'm going to be gone for 15 days. I think it's down to now. 15, 16 days. I'm going to try to do 10 or 11 bourbon hunts while I'm gone. So that's going to be fun. Um, it's going to be a, going to be a time. We're going to drive I'm driving all the way up to Michigan, so I'm thinking I might go to Cincinnati tomorrow or Wednesday, do some hunting there in the evening, then on up to Michigan, and then we're going to hit, you know, all the way over to um, to Utah. So it's going to be fun. The best weller is a free weller. That is absolutely right, Eric. As expensive as those are getting, I have not yet picked up an OKI. I want to buy the next one I see, though. You know what I did get? I did get this, and this wasn't on a bourbon hunt. So I can go ahead and pop this. Actually, the bottle's already open, but we can try it. And that is a four gate. I have been avoiding these because they are very expensive. And 
Someone tell me, I've been wanting to try them. I've been seeing them. Lots of folks talk good things about them. And a lot of folks said, if you get a four gate, you have to get the Kelvin. And this is a Kelvin Collaboration 5. Uh, I might, I don't know if Illinois, like I'm going to be in Chicago. I'm passing through Chicago. I don't think I'm hunting in Chicago. I've got a whole trip um, to come back to Chicago where we just do Chicago. I want to put a little more planning into that one. Um, this is not the one we popped open in the parking lot. That one we're going to get to. This is not one from that video. We just want to warm up our palate a little bit. This one's got some proof to it. We're going to warm up our palate. Then we will get into the bourbon haul from the Ohio video. This one is, I can't read that writing. They, they just make, I mean, it's 58.5% alcohol, so 117 proof. But they tell what it is here. It's some sort of finish. Who knows? Four gate down under is good. Uh, Old Granddad Bonded. I don't know if it's the best cheap whiskey, but if you're talking about like simple, one note, really good, um, affordable whiskey, that one's definitely on the list for sure. Explain warm up the palate. Okay, so Amelia, um, what we do is our palates usually are going to be, they can be overwhelmed by alcohol, especially if we get something with proof. I don't know if we've got anything with a lot of proof. Actually, we do. I know we got a Sagamore cash strength over there. Uh, so what I want to do is I just want to have a pour before I really do any serious judging of a spirit, right? I don't want it to be the first pour I've had and then your palate starts to desensitize a little bit. So I'm looking for some subtlety, some nuance in the flavors. And so I want the palate to not be, like I haven't had a pour um, in a couple of days. And so I want to just, I think it's, yeah, it's been, I think Saturday. Saturday we had some folks over. Um, so it's been a couple of days. So I just want to kind of get the palate warmed up. Really, we're just going to have a drink before we start trying these new things that we haven't tried before. Benchmark bonded for budget. Yeah, that, the benchmark stuff may have wiped out that whole under 25 category. Honestly, it's so good. Addison from Pennsylvania in the house. Uh, quality low proof bourbon. So it's not going to be below 80 proof, right? I think bourbon has to be 80 proof or more. So you're never going to get down to that. Now you can try some, some mixed things. You can pour it with ice or over ice and let it water down. But out of the bottle, uh, bourbon is going to be 80 proof or more. Uh, I'm going to take Eagle Rare, Steedley, all day long right there. I, I like the Russell's 10, but I strongly prefer the Eagle Rare. How much whiskey can one drink in a week? I, you know, I'm testing that theory. I'll let you know. Uh, yeah, I can elaborate on a proof of whiskey and how that affects the flavor profile. So we prefer... Um, a lot of folks that drink a lot of whiskey prefer higher proof, more alcohol. And basically what that means is it's more, you know, if it's cash drink, barrel strength, that's how it came out of the barrel. And so it's not watered down. So the flavors are a lot more intense. Doesn't mean it's better. Like honestly, sometimes most whiskey is going to be a little better if you take the proof down a little bit. Like I'm having this four gate right here. And I think realistically, I would pick up a lot more subtlety and nuance on that if it were a little lower proof. There's just a ton of burn on that one. But I also don't like really low proof, like 80 proof, 90 proof whiskey most of the time because they are very, very plain and you're just, you don't get a, you don't get any burn. Like I want a little burn, um, but I also want some complexity. And once you get that watered down, it loses a lot of the complexity. It's just kind of one flavor all the way through. Uh, and I want it to kind of evolve a little bit. I want to pick up two or three tasting notes. Old Forster, 1920. It's a good one. Uh, I like Still Austin. We're doing a barrel pick with them in September. So we're going to have a barrel of Still Austin for our patrons. Um, so if you want to be a part of that, I think we're just about to open that up for who's... No, actually, that one's already booked. We, we're, I'm taking some work associates on that one. We do have a Ben Holiday pick and a 13th Commies pick coming up in August um, where we're about to open that up for patrons to join us. I think we can have six up in um, Missouri for the Ben Holiday, and we can have four um, in addition to Jill and I over at 13th Commies. Uh, I am going to go through Wisconsin. I'm not going to spend a lot of time there, but it's literally just drive up. I think we spend the night there one night and, and on. Oh, uh, yeah, the Ben Holiday weed is fantastic. All right, let's get into some of these from our travels. 
Uh, Driftless Glen. Nice. I've got a few of those. I need to go back to them. Um, it's funny. Sometimes I try whiskey for the first time and I'm like, eh, it's okay. And then somebody asked me, like I, that Monk's Road over there. I didn't care too much for it, but somebody that works there was asking me about it today. Um, and so I did have a little sample of that. So that, I guess that's not my first pour of the day. But I had one this afternoon, just a little touch of it. I was like, that's better than I remember. So... Just had some 13th colonies, Big Daddy says. Liquor stores in Wisconsin, that's part of the story though. Like if they suck, that's that's cool. Like I I only have so much room, I'm gonna be gone. I'm going on 10 bourbon hunts. I can't buy a lot of whiskey. So um, if I don't find anything there, that'll be a good story. Uh, Garrison Brothers, pretty good, but it's intense. Like you gotta be in the mood for it. I like it, but it's not something I drink an awful lot. Uh, yeah, the McKenna 10 is pretty good, but I can see how some folks like it, some folks don't. All right, first bottle we got, and I don't no particular order, um, is the Sagamore Spirit Cask Strength. Now, someone, I think it was uh, Dan at the Bourbon Junkies told me when I was looking into rye, it's like, give Sagamore a try. Um, and so we picked up a Sagamore rye, but it wasn't the cask strength. And it was really good. I enjoyed it. It was a very bourbon-friendly rye. You know, it's much more caramel flavors than, than rye flavors. Uh, Cause I'm still not necessarily on board with most like 90, 10 rise or 95, five rise. Um, I want it to be a little more like, like a bourbon with a little rye spice. The proof queen's got some things going on. She is going to be off the stream today. She might swing through. You never can tell she's here. Uh, she's just got a very busy schedule. Yeah, hit the like button for me if you would. If you're not subscribed, maybe consider doing that. This is all we do on these live streams is hang out. We do have some fun things we're talking about trying to do. I'm just trying to check on the legality of those things because sometimes my ambition um, outpaces my rights as a U.S. citizen to do some things. And so we're checking on some legalities, but we may have some really fun things going on here soon. For every liquor I like, I should say cheese. Okay, not sure why. Sagamore cask. Okay, this is the truth is what you said. That is a nice rye. Um, it's a little more rye than I would have liked, say, a year ago. Um, but it is, it's, so it's not like a full out, like, like um, Sazerac rye, which is just very rye forward to me. This one is a little more muted and dialed back. But my phone's ringing off the hook here. Um, so it is a little more, um, you know, kind of, kind of rye-esque, but, um, actually this guy was calling me about a, oh, I just got a, I got a, uh, hold on, let's, let, let, let's, let's answer this one. Well, no, I might, I better not, I better not, but apparently I've got another Eagle Rare 17 coming, so, um, which is awesome because I love that one I've got back there. Sagamore's everywhere. It's not around here. I think I, I haven't seen it a lot here in Alabama, but, you know, distribution's kind of limited there. I can't, they, I'll tell you about it later. I'll tell you why I can't take it live. I, I thought about it for a second, and, you know, there are some things you just can't say. Um, yeah, we do have a patron. So, do have a patron. It should be dropping links here occasionally, but you could just Google... Um, Patron and uh, Bruzel. Some guys have all the luck. That's I don't usually, but then occasionally, you know, if you play the game enough, I guess. But um, oh, the Jack Single Barrel Barrel Strength Rice, fantastic. That's the limited edition they released is one of my. It's actually probably my favorite rye. Um, the Single Barrel Barrel Strength. I've got it in the back. It's like it's not to that level, but it is really really delicious. Uh, haven't had whistle pick 15. Uh, Old Forster is a good starter rye. Um, yeah, I think I like the sweet red wheat over Holiday's regular bourbon. I really need the cash strength of both of those, but I think that's what our barrel pick's going to be. Um, I think they may allow us to pick a sweet red wheat cask and their normal bourbon at cash strength. I, I asked them. They seem, to, they seem to be open to the idea. Crowd Royal Vanilla, pretty good as a mixer, man. What inspired the Brusel name? It's just a name I had. Uh, we were working on a beer website slash app 12, 15 years ago. 
it kind of fell through. We just couldn't get the data we needed. So I set, I was sitting on the domain for at least a dozen years. And when we started doing the channel, we were going to do beer, bourbon, and barbecue. And the bourbon stuff just took off. And I'm, I'm much more interested in, in bourbon than beer or barbecue. Uh, the bourbon hunting videos are a DJI Osmo pocket. Appreciate it, Lucas. All right, what else have we got here? So this is the first one we got. Sagamore Cash Strength Rye. If you like rye, now that one is a little more rye forward. If you're not a rye person, I can see how you might not like that one. But it is, um, it is a really solid rye. The second one, Von Payne Black. Now you can tell by the state of this bottle, we've been drinking some of this. I've been trying this in all sorts of things. We, I, I opened it with the folks that were bourbon hunting with me there. So we tried it, so it was already open. And I've just been pouring it in all sorts of things to see if I could find something that I just absolutely loved it with. I have not found that thing yet. This is definitely not something um, that I would drink just neat. I have not visited the Holiday Distillery, but we're going to on the 16th of August. We'll be there. Yeah, the, the gargoyle that just like pukes whiskey into, uh, into the um, glass here is fantastic. That's, it's a nice bottle. It's a nice looking bottle, kind of a gothic feel to it with this gargoyle on top that just like spits the whiskey out. Exceptional package. But it is... Very much a cherry flavored, like a deep, dark red cherry flavored whiskey. And that is not what I'm looking for in a whiskey. And so I've been pouring it in Mountain Dews and Sprites and mixed drinks and all sorts of things. I think I made it old fashioned with it. It was okay for that. I haven't found, I think if you like that dark red cherry, you're going to really like this one. Um, I think there's probably some mixed drink recipes where this is going to really shine uh, me just sitting around randomly poured it in things. I haven't found that yet. Uh, Michael, Jill watches all the videos. So she's learning, unfortunately, how much I spend on all of the bourbon hunts. But, yeah, we did uh, the we did go to the Buffalo Trace Distillery. Um, I think it was the, barrel, the last barrel pick we did in like November, January. Uh, we went by the Buffalo Trace Distillery. Just took a light tour. Um... How does it seal? Um, I, I don't know if it's got a valve or if it doesn't seal. Now, if you're talking about when it ships, it's got like a red stopper that goes into the bottom of it that just kind of clogs it up. So that's okay. That's okay, but it's definitely a mixer. Unless you just like, like if you just like that dark red cherry, you probably pour it over ice, it would be fine, but. The Buffalo Trace video was great. Well, I, I hope and we've got a lot of distillery uh, barrel picks coming where we're going to do a tour of the distillery as part of that video. Watch those for me. If those do really well, there's a lot of fun, cool things we can do with that. Bruzel, today is your birthday, Luke. Congratulations and happy birthday. We actually, if y'all don't realize, some of y'all may not know, we have two channels here on YouTube. We have Bruzel and we have Bruzel Mixed. And Bruzel Mixed does all the mixed drink stuff where we might mix this with something. We'll try, you know, Jack and Coke or whatever. Like we just make all sorts of mixed drinks. And that channel actually crossed over 100,000 subscribers today. Uh, and it's like three, three months and two weeks old, something like that. So that probably would be good with a Dr. Pepper. Uh, haven't tried Four Locos in a long, long time. Probably need to try some though. What do you use to write? These are all like laser etched. So we ordered these from a company and you could buy our Bruzel Glen Cairns at Bruzel.com with this laser etching on them. We've had like three different designs. Uh, we don't do any lives for those other channels yet. We don't do any long forms for the other channel yet, but we probably will at some point. It's just time. Like I don't have, I don't have the time to, like I'd live stream every day if I had the chance and the opportunity. So it's just, you know, one, I don't want to drink necessarily every day. That's probably not the healthiest lifestyle to live at this point. Um, and it's, you know, it's just a time commitment. So, Auburn going to win the SEC West this year. No, but they're going to be better than people think they are. What's the difference between glasses? Well, these are Glencairns. Um, they just kind of concentrate the aromas and flavors. 
So this is a really nice, you want a proper whiskey glass uh, if you're gonna drink it neat, if you're not gonna put it over ice. And this is my favorite style, although there's a lot of really good ones. New Orleans glasses, Visky has some, like there's a lot of them. This is just probably the most popular, most prevalent one is the Glen Cairn, and then we just have our logo thrown on them. Um, Middle West Pumpernickel Rye. I don't know about that, but what about this Middle West right here? This is Middle West Straight Weeded Bourbon Whiskey Michelon Reserve. I don't know if that's Michel One or Michelone or Michelone Reserve, M-I-C-H-E-L-O-N-E. -E. Small batch craft, smooth, full-bodied, four grain. Um, what is the proof on this sucker here? Can't even freaking see it. Oh, well, we're going to try it regardless. Jeffrey with the War Eagle in the chat. Jeffrey, appreciate that, man. War Eagle back at you. <laughs> um, aged in Yeah, Aged in Ore makes some really, there's a lot of good ones. Like Glen Cairn's not your only choice. But a proper glass that has the right shape. Um, and it's the right size is, is essential gear if you're going to get into trying whiskey neat. Michelone, maybe Michelone. That's what, I think that's what I said first, didn't it? Michelone. Um, if you're talking about good, so Austin, you're talking about glass-wise, just get you some Glen Cairns. As far as whiskey goes, I've got a whole video, Top 5 Bourbons for Beginners. Watch that one for me. I go through, because I, I can kind of tell you, you know, the list, but in that video, I go through why. I want you to try each one of those. And then when you try those, and none of them, a couple of them are kind of hard to find, none of them super expensive. And then when you, um, when you roll back in, I can give you some recommendations. Peter, love your content. Appreciate it, Peter. Thank you. Uh, I do have a Rock Town, but the one I have is a store pick. It's too oaky. So I need to get like a normal release Rock Town. Uh, I think the 1792 Sweet Wheat's a little, it was a little plain for me. It was, it was good, but it was just a little bland. Oh, Matt's a Horns fan. Yeah, bourbon's going to be great in fall. <laughs> Dogs. Green River Foolproof. I have not had it, but we did do a barrel pick recently at Short Barrel that had Green River and Bardstown in it at Cash Strength, and it was fantastic. Uh, this is not a bourbon. Uh, this is technically a blended whiskey infused with natural black currant. And it's good, but it's not, a, it's not a whiskey. It's a mixture. Like, you compare this to Vanilla Crown or Fireball or something like that more so than you would against an, an actual bourbon. I haven't had Russell Single, Rick. I need it. I need it. L blind test of least favorite bottle. We actually just shot a video of y'all's least favorite, or at least um, patron in Discord's least favorite bottles. That video should be coming out soon where we try all of those. Although most of them weren't bad. They just weren't, they're like, they're not special, but they weren't bad. There were a few that were awful. How does the seal, I don't know if it seals. That's the problem. Like, I don't know if it has a valve, so when you turn it over, it seals, or if it's just venting to the air at all times. Don't really know. Don't really care. It's, it's, if this goes bad, I will not cry over it. I'll just, I'll just cut my losses and roll on. Blends was not in there. Appreciate it, Girth Brooks. Staying in Bardstown, no driving. That would be fun. This has a little, I probably should not have had that. I don't know if I have any water down here. Yeah, we got a bottle of water down there. I uh, probably shouldn't have had that cherry flavored one right before I actually tried to do a bourbon because I'm still kind of tasting that black currant. Jared, sipping on OGD114, appreciate it. I wished I had a Kentucky Outback. I'm starting to buy, like, I, I, I splurged on this four gate. Um, but, like, I, I just have a hard time paying $300 for a bottle of bourbon. Yeah, pump that like button, appreciate it, Steve and Chupacabra. I like that. I don't love that. I like that. It's a little harsh on the, the back of the palate, but that could be me after that black currant. So I, I, let me see if I can. Oh, 
Ooh, Kyle's wife's gonna be at the Virginia ABC. We got an inside connection now. Don't don't get her fired already. Sigma Nu 300 uh, Frey Ranch. I like Frey Ranch a lot. Now we had a barrel pick that we got last year in Vegas from Liquor Lineup. One of the best bottles of whiskey I've had. Like seriously, 20, top 20, 25 bottles of whiskey I've tried over the last couple of years was that Frey Ranch store pick. Now we it was a cash strength. We just got another cash strength store pick from somebody else. It was okay. So they've obviously got some significant variance in the quality or, or the flavor profile, not quality. They were both of quality, but it was, um, it was good. I'm just, I'm holding off a little bit till I have a few more samples. I think, uh, there's no blue, but I do have some blue run, um, high rye bourbon somewhere. Now, we took a lot of them. I don't know if y'all can see, but this bar back here used to have a bunch of bottles on it. Now it's got my ice things. I was filling up, but I ran out of time. We took a bunch of them and put them in the back, so it's really hard for me to find things right now. I've got to go back there and organize them because we're running out of, out of um, space. I, I mean, Mason, I don't know if I'd say it's number one, but it's on the list for sure. Michigan. Well, I'll be in Michigan probably Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, so I'll check it out. Yeah, it's got a little harsh kind of kind of oakiness on the on the back end of it, but it's good. Like this is a this is a fine spirit. They make a really nice whiskey. It's just got a little bit of like a harsh oakiness to me on the middle and the and the back of the palate. Um, so, not my favorite, but not bad. This is our parking lot whiskey right here. If you watch the Ohio Bourbon Hunt. Um, this is the one, so we were, we were going in, we pulled up in Maggie, we had Maggie, we pulled up this liquor store, and this uh, lady and her husband um, came walking down the, the aisle, they had parked further away from the store, and they're like, are you, are you Bruzel? And I was like, yeah, um, of course. And, uh, you know, they just were fans of the channel, watch, watch a lot of the content, and so we were just picking with them, having a good time, talking a little crap in the stores I tend to do, and... They were interested in this one, and I was like, well, let's, we'll open it in the parking lot, to which they were a little shocked and surprised, but like, if you can't open whiskey in the parking lot, what's the purpose in buying it? Uh, this guy here won some sort of medal here, it looks like. It's got a little tag that says it's, fr it's from the grain to the bottle, the Detrick Distilling Company in Dayton, Ohio, and it's got a picture of two little gold medals that I can't read. Uh, this is a four-barrel, four-grain, straight rye whiskey. Hand-toasted, 53-gallon barrels, 104 proof. I do like how they put, like, these are big barrels. The, you know, it's toasted. I don't know about four barrels. Four barrels seems excessive. Like, one barrel good, two barrel good. Four barrel seem like a lot of barrel. Joel with the $5 super chat. Appreciate it. Uh, yeah, we're definitely going to do some hunting in and around Kansas City if time permits, we'll see how bad that that store pick or that pick gets out of a out of a um, out of hand. War Eagle One, we can't talk about those things, man. I just got like, he was calling me. Chris was calling me a minute ago, and I was about to answer, and I was like, eh, I don't know how much we want to talk about that, but that's awesome. Um, I haven't done a video on the bourbon found in Costco, but I have one. We'll try it after this if you want to. So I do have a Kirkland's. I didn't buy it at a Costco. I went to a liquor store in Georgia and they had a Kirkland sitting there. I was like, I thought this was Costco only. And apparently it wasn't. So I bought it. It's sitting on the bar back there. I'll open it up. We'll try it. I haven't even opened it yet. I've got a few back there we could try if y'all want to. Uh, yeah, higher proof does have more taste. But honestly, if you're not used to the proof, you may pick up less because the alcohol just kind of gets to you. Hannibal with the $10 Super Chat. My bourbon club sent me... Stellum Bourbon Black this month, MSRP $99, seems overpriced to me. Stellum Black. I have not had Stellum Black. Um, I don't think I've had any Stellum, honestly. I don't think I've tried any Stellum. Um, Michigan, I'm going to be up in, um, what's the town? So th Thursday, I've got to be in, hold on just a second, I'll tell you. Jonathan with a $1.99 super check. Kirkland isn't bad at all. We'll try it. I got to be up in Midland and then back down in Auburn Hills 
on Friday and Saturday. Didn't like the Kirkland blended scotch. Well, let's try this. Y'all pronounce this for me. D-E-T-R-I-C-K. Detrick? It sounds like a Detrick to me, but Dietrich's, Dietrich's is all right. Sagamore is so good, I agree. I thought it was really good. Um, I do have some pin hooks, I think. I don't know where they're at, though. It's been a while. That has, like four barrels was too much. I was right. Four barrels is too much. It's So a lot of whiskey, when it's got way too much heat or it's been in too many too many barrels, lots of times small barrels, um, it starts to get kind of a raisin flavor. It's like an oaky, like dark sweetness that kind of tastes like raisins. And I, a lot of people will like that. It's an interesting flavor note. Um, I like it occasionally kind of as a change of pace. It's kind of like Garrison Brothers. It's an acquired taste that takes, a, you know, takes me being in the right mood. This has a little bit of that, but it's subtle. It's not overwhelming like some of the ones we tried um, in the past. So it's a little more subtle, but, and, and the more I drink of it, the more subtle that gets. So I, if you'd have handed me that though, I would have not picked that as a rye whiskey. And I don't know if they tell us the mash bill. I would have said maybe that's a high rye bourbon, which is usually what I'm looking for, right? Something that's maybe bourbon friendly. Um, that one has some rye to it, but I wouldn't have been sure that that was a rye. I thought maybe that's a bourbon with a lot of rye because the rye really kind of blends with that oakiness and that, um, that kind of raisiny flavor on the end. Overall, I like that though. It's an interesting package. Like the more I go back to it, the rye starts to get a little more prominent and that kind of finish that kind of raisiny finish starts to kind of dampen down a little bit and it starts to take more, taste more and more like a rye and it, it gets better and better with each sip of it. Uh, how's the gargoyle juice? It's a mixer, man. It's, it's a very interesting mixer that I have not figured out. We've gone through a lot of it. Just I've had, I had a bunch of people here. We were trying a bunch of different mixed drinks and we found nothing that was like, okay, that is exactly what this was designed for. Ah, uh, the best benchmark. Here's my problems with the benchmarks. I'm just gonna be honest with y'all. I like I brought, I was talking some crap on some benchmarks, so I broke out this bonded. Um, I don't. This does not taste good anymore. This is not that old of a bottle. It's it's months old. This is a few months old. But the problem I have with these benchmarks is these are the worst tops. Like I'm okay with screw tops. Just use a plastic screw top or a thick metal screw top. This one. I squished it down to try to get it to stay on there, but I'm pretty sure this thing is just oxidized because the top just does not tighten. And so I, I'm just a little, that's the only thing I don't like. These are fantastic other than they probably have the worst top on the market. So I don't know which is the favorite one. I was trying to figure that out out of the ones I own, but that one's oxidized. I couldn't even try. Ooh, and I apologize, the chat is moving really fast. I can't keep up with it, but um, Bell of Dayton Bourbon Batch 2, also fantastic. I'd love to try that, actually. This was good. I'm, I may look for one of those when I'm up that way here later this week. Um, all right, we were going to try the Kirklands. Let's, um, let's give the Kirklands a try. I haven't opened it. I bought a few bottles. I went over to Maple Party Shop in, uh, in Columbus, Georgia. And uh, it's a liquor store attached to a gas station. I don't have a lot of high expectations for places like this. It had an incredible selection. Like they had all sorts. That's where I got the four gate. I had a, I had a hard time just like limiting because I was like, I should have been filming because I don't want to buy all these bottles and not have, it on, not have any footage. And I bought a lot of bottles. Um, and we're about to film. I bought some I needed for filming. So let me, um, let me grab the ones we're filming. One, this... Kirkland right here. I got this All Nation. I bought the four gate. I think I may have bought one or two more from them as well. Brandon with the $5 super chat. When in Michigan, I highly recommend stopping at, I'm not gonna try to pronounce that, Brewing Company. They have amazing bourbon barrel aged IPA called Drippa. Let me ask y'all a question. Let me ask y'all a question about bourbon barrel aging. So if I, like, 
locally here, we have a, uh, a brewery that makes a really nice McKenzie Scotch Ale, is what they call it, Scotch Ale. Really sweet beer. So a lot of folks don't like sweet beers. I'm thinking about just go ahead and, and having them make me a couple of barrels of it. And if it turns out good, bottling it and putting them out there for sale. And I'm just, I'm not sure if y'all are interested in those kinds of experiments because I'm interested in doing them. I just don't need two barrels of beer. Decent on the benchmark. Is it benchmark? No, benchmark is made by Buffalo Trace. S. Myers would love to see that video. Best 1.75 liter in a blind. We've got a bunch of ancient, ancient ages back here. I was gonna run some experiments and shoot a video that I can't tell y'all about and take it to the Bourbon Junkies. Bourbon Junkies pours in the parks this weekend. That's where I'm gonna be in Michigan. Um, and I was gonna do an experiment and try to film a video with them. I just didn't have time to get it done. So I'm gonna do it again later. We'll figure out when. Get another Glen Cairn here for these. Monroe, Louisiana gas station liquor stores where it's at. I'll keep that in mind because I'm going to do Monroe, Louisiana at some point. Um, Knob Creek Single Barrel 120 Proof Store Pit. Yes, grab that. Absolutely. If it's a reasonable price. Some beer content mixed in. Um, and especially if it's bourbon barrel aged, right? Only $18. I don't know what this one was. This is premium small batch bourbon. Tennessee straight bourbon whiskey aged seven years. Kenneth, Four Roses Single Barrel, is it Single Barrel Barrel Strength? Um, love the content. Appreciate it, Kenneth. Thanks for the support. I have not tried Luchenbach. Oh, this plastic's thick. Thick boy. Yeah, West Monroe. That's what I know. I mean, I didn't, not a really show. I don't watch a lot of TV, so I don't watch many shows, but see if I can break a tooth. All right, right, I'll slow down. It's okay. I'll, I'll dial it back. Nah, I'm just talking to y'all. Uh, this is old school. We are, we are making really small pours, though. You'll notice that. I'm doing really, this is an old school live stream. This is how we used to do it back in the day when it was just me. I just talk really fast and drink a lot of whiskey. Had a bottle of John J. Bowman single barrel. Yes, I think it got put back there. It was out here. Um, like, it was on the bar at the last live stream. I don't know if it, it made it into the... Uh, made it into the stream, but we had it on the bar. We used it in a video. Uh, what do I do that I travel so much? Um, I own a small business, so we got some, like most of this travel is just for bourbon content, to be honest with you. Like I, the good thing is, is most of my responsibilities can be done on the internet or like we're fully remote team. So as long as I can get on the internet some and make phone calls and stuff, I can do my job. Respond to emails, make phone calls. I can do most of that in the evening, like responding to calls and doing most of the work in the decision making, uh, which allows us to take at least one trip like this a year we used to do before the pandemic and we have it. Um, so I'm driving up to Michigan by myself and then my wife and, and kids and my mother are flying into Chicago on Sunday. So I'm picking them up and they'll be with me for two weeks of the trip. I've uh, been smoking some cigars. We had a bunch of folks over. We got a little group that gets together once a month here. And last Wednesday we did cigars and whiskey at the house, and everybody brought cigar blends, so I'm, I'm getting there. All Nations is solid. So I've got a video to shoot on this. I went into a restaurant in um, Georgia, in Columbus, Georgia, last week, and um, we were talking about, I, I was there meeting with the UX designer that's going to help us with the Bruzel Bourbon Hunting app uh, that we're working on. So we're working on an app to help with bourbon hunting, help with managing a collection of whiskey, and the waiter recognized me and, you know, asked if, if, if I was Bruzel. That's, that's usually how people bruise. Are you Bruzel? Yes. I'm, I'm TJ, but yes, I, yes, I'm Bruzel. Um, and so he said, I asked him what his favorite was, and he said it was this, All Nations. So I've got a, I got a video. I bought this to do as, as a short to see if it's good. Chicago in the house. Tony Gonzalez. Ooh. Old Carter batch. Old Carter stuff is so good. $300. I bought one for $250, so I'm not going to judge you at three. That's usually where I see it. I don't know anything about batch 10, though, but it's, um, it's a lot of money for a whiskey, man. Oh, my. My Lord. What does this say? Welcome, except carry? 
what is carry? I don't, okay. This is from somewhere in Kentucky, Kentucky Straight Bourbon. I think it's distributed by somebody in Georgia, though. This is 119 proof of absolute deliciousness. Like, Lord, that is, okay. I'm going to be honest. When the waiter told me All Nations was his favorite, I judged him just a little bit. I, did, I was just like, mm, okay, I'll try it for you, man. I'll give it a shot. Like, I, I trust you. I trust you. I don't have high expectations. I don't expect it. Like, it's all nations. What is that? I've never heard of that. How good can that be? I looked at it. It's sourced. I checked it out. I think it's sourced and in, in, bottled by Soul Spirits in Atlanta, Georgia, distilled in Kentucky. I'm like, mm, I mean, it's probably all right. Like, he says it's good. It's probably, it may be some finish. It may be something. He, I didn't know. I was, I was very hesitant. Let's put it that way. I'm going to try not to say anything stupid. But... That's really good. Like, that's what I'm looking for in a whiskey right there. Like, some of these are good, right? The Middle West, it's good. There's some things I don't love about it, but there's nothing I don't like about that All Nations. Um, it, is, it is a middle-of-the-road bourbon, sweet, fruity, definitely got a nice cherry flavor to it. A little bit of oak, but not too much oak. 119 proof. Wow, that's going to be a good video. That is going to be a good video. Yes, we just shot a video, uh, me and Jill, reviewing and comparing batch two of uh, Black Steel to batch one. Um, and I liked batch one. I thought it was a little youthful. It was a little young, but it still was a pretty decent whiskey. Uh, batch two was better in all ways. This is All Nations Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey Barrel Proof. Um, so Old Nation's Barrel Proof, Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, and that is, that is delicious. Like, that's just, that's just good bourbon right there. 80 Laws Four Grain, haven't had it. Loved it, nice. They have a rye, All Nation's has a rye? At this point, I'll try anything they got. If they're in Atlanta, we need to talk. Can I get a store pick of that? Can I get a pick of this? Can I have a barrel of this? Because I'll take it, absolutely, right now. Lord, have there is a lot of good whiskey in Atlanta, Georgia. A lot of good whiskey. Short Barrel's good stuff. Um, Old Fourth, you know, combined with Short Barrel there. But I, I like the Short, I like Old Fourth, don't get me wrong, but I like the Short Barrel stuff a little better, especially cast strength. Um, you know, a lot of folks like the ASW. I haven't tried all their expressions, but I'm, I'm a little iffy on Finnish whiskeys, so I'm sure they've got an expression that I'm really going to like, but... Omega, Jill just had some stuff to do. Sorry about that, but she's not going to make it. So, uh, I might be passing. I don't. We might have to bypass Oklahoma to like we were planning on coming through Oklahoma on this road trip we're about to do. We have to go to Colorado from Colorado home, and that was going to carry us through Oklahoma. Now we have to go over to Kansas City. I'm not sure if we'll be stopping in Oklahoma at this point, but it's going to happen. 2023 Bomb Burgers. I just opened the first Bomb Burgers I've ever owned. That was really good. I like the Bomb Burgers better than the Shanks. I opened that one as well. About all that's good in Atlanta. I don't know the price point. I think I, I threw the receipt back there. So normally I don't really, I just throw the receipt in a box, but um, I normally have it on film, so I know. This one was me going over to Maple Party Shop there in Columbus. I didn't film it. Like I just, I was just over there to pick up some things for videos. I was planning on filming it for a short and I'll still do the short. I got to shoot that tomorrow, um, but I haven't tried it. Um, highest level of E.H. Taylor you've tried or have? Well, I own what, the freaking E.H. Taylor that I, I got in Orlando that we had on the last stream. I didn't notice. Y'all didn't mention it. Nobody noticed. Nobody noticed. That was the straight rye. I thought it was a small batch. It was a straight rye. So in Orlando, I picked up an E.H. Taylor straight rye, which is great, because that bottle I've got back there is the only one I've ever owned. Now I've got a backup. Um, but I've got the straight rye. I've got small batch. I've got single barrel, and I've got foolproof um, open on the bar. Those are the only ones I've ever had. Never had any of their limited release stuff. See you in California soon. I don't know if I'll be in California this year, but I'm almost 100% we will be there 
next year. Uh, we're going to Provo, so that's probably where we'll try to hunt is in Provo. So many people, well, we're going we're gonna to do some stuff in Chicago. We got some crazy things planned. Um, I can't talk too much about them right now, but we got some interesting things that we're trying. I'm still waiting on confirmation, but we might be doing something with some players from a major sports franchise in the area. We'll see if it works. Like, I can't promise. I don't know if it's going to work. It's still very iffy. But I, that's why I'm going through Chicago, but I'm not stopping because I want to wait to see if that works out. Oh, this hat is actually uh, Crawford Willis, uh, Jeffrey Pope. This is like a local real estate agency. I like, so when it comes to mesh back hats, I like Richardson hats. They just, they're super comfy. The Bruzel hats are not Richardson's. The next batch, I'm going to start, we're working on some higher end merch here over the late summer and early fall. I'm going to make some Richardson hats for sure. Um, so you'll be able to get a Bruzel Richardson. Did Jill get the New York mug yet? I don't think so. I don't think it's made it if it was mailed. Uh, not Michael Jordan, I wish. I wish. We're not, um, yeah, we're just passing through. I'm just picking up Jill at the airport. Yeah, is there not, nothing in Provo there, Fendi Man? Is there nothing in Provo? I don't, I don't know. I don't know anything about Provo. I just got to stay there for a day, so I figured I would give it a try. Pacific, yeah, I like the Richardsons, though. Where, where did you say you were, Tim? Or did you say, were you, you were the one that said you were in Chicago? Yeah, Richardson has that market corner. They make a good hat, though. It's just like the right size. Uh, Peter, we've got the... We, August 16th, I'm at Ben Holiday, and I think we're picking a bourbon and their soft red wheat. Um, so I think we're going to... And it's going to take a couple few months to get them after that, but when am I coming to PA? I was going to do that this year, but that trip kind of got scrapped for this one. So probably... Early next year, we'll do East Coast. Late next year, I want a bourbon hunt in all 50 states. That's my goal. And we're going to hit 10 of them at least on this trip, maybe more. Going to hit High West. We might. I just don't know if we, I don't know if we'll have the time to make it to High West. Yes, of course. Yeah, New England is very high on our list. I've got some things in the summer next year I may, come, may go to, um, to California for, so we may hit some West Coast stuff on that. I might be in Canada early next, early September, so we might get a Canada pick in or, you know, hunt, and then I might jet down to the Pacific Northwest if time permits to do that one. Um, I'm going through South Dakota. I'll be in South Dakota next week. I'm going to stop at, uh, was it Sioux Falls? We're going to jet over to see Mount Rushmore. So we're going to do a little bur bourbon hunting. Um, I have been bourbon hunting a lot in Columbus, Georgia. I have not filmed it yet. I'm probably going to save that for like allocation season to see if I can't get over there and find some allocator, like, you know, some high-end BTAC stuff or something. We'll see. I don't know if I can find it, but. Oh, we're going to get to the UK for sure. I don't know. It might be a couple of years, though. Uh, any interest in the St. Louis, Missouri, Illinois side area? I mean, we're going to be in St. Louis on the 16th. So, appreciate it, Logan. Noel, you could always flip it over to Bachelorette if you, if that's, if you think that's better. If you, you know, um, I went, I just was in Shreveport like two weeks ago and that video will probably be coming out in a couple of few weeks. I don't have any plans on Cincinnati at this point. Go slap, somebody let the Frey Ranch people know. Um, this is actually decent. I'm sitting here drinking it like, what am I drinking? This is the Kirkland bourbon. This is decent. Now, it's not high end. It's not anywhere near as good as this. It's not anywhere near as good as this All Nations. That All Nations is much sweeter. Now, granted, the proof is probably quite a bit different here as well. What's this one? 103 proof versus 119, I think it was. Um, so this one's just much sweeter, more, more robust, much more complex. This one is just a good, if it's cheap, I don't know the price point on this. It's Kirkland. I assume it's not expensive. It's just a, it's a good whiskey. That's just a good, hopefully affordable whiskey. Nothing wrong with that one whatsoever. Um, honestly, out of the ones that I've had, the new ones that I've had, I probably like it less than this one. It's not as interesting as the Forgate. 
Probably put the Sagamore just a little bit above it, but that's a rye. Um, and then this slots in pretty close to how much I enjoyed that Detrick there. Just got back from Scotland. Nothing good at most of the places. They're probably going to murder me when I go to Scotland. I'm going to be honest. I'm, I'm probably going to have a hit put out for me. Um, we actually got an email this week. Over the weekend, the gentleman watched the video where I called Johnny Walker Blue Label uh, an Irish whiskey and got mad enough to go to the website and send me a nasty email uh, telling me I needed to get my head out of my redneck ass and do some reading on the label. Um, I was like, okay, that's that, the troll is working, apparently. First time I've had somebody mad enough to come off the platform, track my email address down, and send me an email. Oh, yeah, I, I mean, I, that, it's, I drink enough Jack Daniels to know. Is the old man, I don't know, haven't had old man winter. Come down from Vancouver, there's an amazing store in Bellingham. Interesting. Yeah, so the Bourbon Retriever, what we're trying to do now is get all 50 states, at least the continental U.S., probably go to Hawaii. You know, I'll try to get to Hawaii and Alaska, but try to get 48 continental states, and then we will start venturing out. We'll, we'll get, you know, looks like there's a good chance we'll get Canada in that. It's not a guarantee I've got to be in Canada yet. I'm still waiting to, to get word on that. Um, but I want to get all the states, Canada, and then we'll go, like, I'd love to do Scotland. I'd love to do the UK. I'd love to go to Australia. I, you know, we'd just go to Thailand. Like, we'll go, I'll go anywhere that is safe, right, for the family to go. Four is a single barrel for $39. Nice. Make sure you book a ticket to Scotland. You don't buy a ticket to Ireland. I, I mean, I, okay, so... I don't understand that. I mean, I could buy a ticket to Ireland and then go to Scotland, right? Or do I have to go to Scotland first and then go to Ireland? Ah, uh, if you go to NKY, North Kentucky, okay. That was the NKY was throwing me off there for a second. Cincinnati, yeah, I, I think I'm going to, I may drive up Wednesday to Cincinnati and do some hunting. We'll see. Uh, Woodford's Master Distiller, 124 proof for $150. Um, I think that's roughly what those go for. Um, I like them. I don't buy every one every year just because I don't usually drink them that fast, but I like them better than normal Woodford. Uh, those Kentucky Owls are always $300, Kip, every time I've seen them. Like, always $300. I wouldn't pay any more than that, but I think that's MSRP on them. I mean, that's the only, only thing I've ever seen them at. Um, the JD Double Barrel, like the malt thing, uh, uh, not much, because I didn't like it. Scotland first for sure. I got you. I got you. Uh, I know. I, I get you, Eric. I, but I still, you know, when you, somebody jokes about your troll, then you just play dumb, and then you're trolling them again. Uh, what are your thoughts on stag? I like it a lot. And I apologize. It just, you know, if you ask your question again, I'll try to get to as many as I can, but there are 818 folks in here. Make sure everybody hits the like button for me, if you would. Um, anything in particular, any other, no, this is the first Costco bourbon I've ever had. We don't have a Costco around here. It's like 45 minutes to a Costco, so I don't have a membership. I actually found this in a liquor store of all places. So, yes, Russell's Reserve 13 for 125 is a buy. Absolutely. This Kirkland was pretty good if it's cheap. I don't remember what I paid for it because it wasn't a video. I just got swept up in the moment and bought it. If this is a, somebody tell me what this Kirkland seven year goes for. I thought it was a good, it, it was a decent whiskey. Not like, oh my God, I'm not, I'd probably never buy another one just because we'll just try new things instead of this. This one though, this one's the one you should buy. All nations right there, cash strength, buy that one. Uh, I'm still, Eric, I'm still just trying to ease into cigars. My favorite right now is still the Ron, it's, it's a Gurkha Ron Abuela rum. Still my favorite. Benchmark Foolproof, fantastic. All the Benchmark stuff's fantastic, but Foolproof's great. I just hate the metal top. We did talk about that a second ago. The tops just don't close properly. The most you've spent on a bottle this year, and what was that bottle? Uh, well, I mean, I just spent 200 on this four gate. That's got to be, that's top, that's top five for sure. The great thing is, is we've been lucky enough with creating content to some folks have given us some really nice expensive bottles. I think I spent close to 200 on um, one of those Willet Purple Tops, the nine-year Willet Purple Top, which honestly, I think they go for 
way more than that. Uh, I actually know the nine year we got from Spillway. So it was probably the six or the seven year that I bought for around $200. Try and see if there's anything else that I've spent. I've been going for volume much more so than high end. And the high end stuff I've gotten has been through friends or luck or whatever. So just looking, I, that's probably the most that I've paid for a bottle. I have 250, 250 for an old Carter, um, 250 for an old Carter, but I, I bought the old Carter at 250 to talk him down on two Weller Antique 107. So that's kind of a package deal, but that's probably, the 250 is probably the most I've spent for one bottle this year, for sure. Boss Hawk, no, that wasn't mine though, Robert. That was, first of all, that was last year, I think. It might've been early this year, um, but I didn't pay that. The, the guy I was with bought that bottle. I just tried it. So I didn't, I didn't, that wasn't my money though. I haven't had Rossville Union. South Carolina is absolutely on my list. Uh, probably going to be next year though. Have you tried Redline Hand Select Single Barrel Finish and Honey Cask? Yes, that is a good bottle. They sent me one. I don't know if it's a hand select. I don't know if it's like a single barrel hand select, but it is their Honey Cask finish. And the folks at Redline actually do it really well. If I remember, if I remember correctly, it is MGP. Um, but their finish is really subtle, which I like. Like you couldn't even tell it's honey cast finish until the finish, right? Until that, like it was completely gone. You just get a nice soft honey finish really, really well. Uh, I'm sure like next year when we head up there, Philip, um, and I appreciate the support with the $2 super chat. I like all the East coast is on the list. So we're going to try to hit all of those all up and down the coast there. Jack Rose saloon, 2,500 bottles. I saw that on was that It's Bourbon Nights video here recently? They went up. Um, that was good. The speed of the chat, I know, Patrick. I'm trying to keep up. I'm trying to keep up. So, um, But it is moving. I do have a rock town, but like I said, it was a store pick, and it was not fantastic. So uh, it was good. It was just too oaky, but that's probably somebody picked an oaky barrel. So I need, I need the regular thing. Um, appreciate it there, Cheslin. It's The growth of this channel has been insane, and I, I want to see it continue. It slowed a little bit, but honestly, it slowed a little bit because I haven't had a lot of time to really think of clever and fun shorts. Like, we're trying some different things with shorts, but as soon as this road trip's over, we're going to hit the ground running. we got a lot of really interesting, fun things we're going to do. Chris, gifting the membership. That's awesome. Who did Lando? Who got it? Does it say? I didn't see who it, who it ended up with. Up oh, right there. J-Rock got a membership. Nice. Total Wine in Columbia, when you come, great selection. Nice. Bear Wallow, never heard of it there, John. Should make a mixed drink with Blanton's. What would you mix? What do you want, an old-fashioned with Blanton's? Is that what you want, Adam? Arturo Fuente Hemingway. I'll have to check that out. Ah, Willet Purple Top Black Bottle 300. That's the, that's the weeded Willet Purple Top. I, I don't think that bottle's worth $300 to me. I like it. It's a good whiskey. I don't think it's worth $300 to me. Uh, yes, the Ben Holiday Soft Red Wheat, buy it, buy it, buy it, buy it. If you see it, reasonable price, buy it. Hilton Head, awesome. I, we spent some time up in Hilton Head a few years ago. Uh, what got you into bourbon drinking? I mean, we were drinking a lot of beer and just, I don't know, so kind of transitioned into, uh, into bourbon, so... Probably, I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to go to at least four or five stores in every video. So if they've got four stores, I'm going to try to go to four stores. I don't, like, some of these towns we're stopping in, I don't really know how big they are or how much, what the liquor scene's like. Um, so mix Blanton's in, with Blanton's and enjoy the Blanton's. Here's a thing we could try. Ooh, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. Y'all got to hit the like button if I'm going to do this, though. Like, y'all got to pump the likes. I don't know what the likes are up to. 377 likes. We're going to have to get to 450 likes. And I'm going to open, uh, for the first time, a Takara Red Japanese Blanton's. But we got to be at 450 likes. I can't, I can't do it at 300-something likes. That's just 300-something likes for that. That's crazy. But look. I got one. I've got a Takara Black and a Takara Red. We're going to open the red. I think the red's the good one. Right here. It's got all this fuzz on it here. Somebody wrapped it up nice and neat, but we got one of these in. We got two blacks. I need a green. We, I want to do 
a video where we rank all of the Blantons. And I think I have all of the normal release Blantons except for the green label that they ship overseas. So I'm, I'm putting out a, a uh, be on the lookout for. Now a couple of them have dropped in some buy sale places here locally, but I have not been quick enough on the draw to be able, not, nor do I want to pay $200 for one. That's just nuts. Um, uh, we're trying some stuff with some script writers. I, that's going to be Shred. I don't know if Shred's in here, but if you're in the Discord, ping Shred. He'll know a lot more about that than I do. I need a green label. I do. Need it for a video. We, we're over 468. That's how you get some likes. Um, this guy here... This is registered, registered bottle number 231. It was dumped on 411.22 from barrel number 43, rick number 32, and is bottled by hand at 93 proof. So is this, y'all tell me about Blanton's Red. This is the one that's like older. Is that right? It's, it's supposedly, supposedly older than a normal Blanton's. Um, and then what's the black? The black here is Rick 41 and it's 80 proof. Oh, we're not trying that. I'm not opening that one. Four bottles of Blanton's in three days. That's good, good haul, man. Never seen a Blanton's in real life. Well, these are, this, I got this, so I ended up getting six bottles. I got one of these, two blacks, and two, or three normal Blantons, but it is just knowing people. Like, it, those were just knowing people, like just having good friends. Somebody knew somebody that was trying to get rid of them at a reasonable price, and I was just like, yeah, I'll take them. Um, because, you know, somebody, we give a lot away to clients, and these um, foreign ones I just didn't have on the bar, so... Your husband is 26 and likes whiskey. No, but like younger folks usually go through the mixed drink phase before they really get into whiskey. Uh, Gonzalo, it takes a lot of whiskey. Like it just takes a, it takes a lot of whiskey for sure. Um, it happens, but it's, it's usually, honestly, it's usually not sipping bourbon. I usually do really good just because bourbon neat. You just don't drink that much. I mean, obviously I've been through quite a bit. I mean, what are we? That's five and two. This one belongs over there. That's what was confusing me. So we're, you know, seven pours in in an hour? That's not bad. Any update on the picks? So, Tim, let's talk about the picks. While I'm, I'm going to let this sit for just a second. Um, the Crittenton's picks, he's got all the paperwork to the state of New York. It's got to be 60 days before that pick is available. Um, Rolling Fork Rum, the rum finished in Weller barrels, that one is going to be bottled August 6th. So in a week it's going to be bottled, and I don't know how long it's going to take to get to the retailer from there, but I'm hoping that one's available. If it's bottled August 6th, it should be available in August at some point. Um, I'm hoping also that one's at Starlight. I haven't heard from them yet. I emailed them. I haven't heard from them. I'm hoping that means the Starlight barrels, the three barrels. We bought a, a whiskey finished in VDN. We bought the, that Rolling Fork rum finished in Weller. We bought their bourbon, and we finished. We got a bourbon finished in rum Agrigal. I'm hoping all of those are ready in August. It concerns me a little bit to have four hit in one month, but such is life. Um, those will go to patrons based on tier level. So if you want to be a part of those, make sure you're in the Bruzel patron. Somebody will drop the link here. It looks like our Streamlabs is dropping it here regularly. Um, so we need, uh, you know, we've got those. That's what, four? Um, I talked to, we just did the short barrel pick, which is out of this freaking world. They just like, sent, I've got a bottle, a sample of that one that I'm taking up to um, pours in the park. I've, I've got a little private thing um, with some folks on Thursday, so I'm not sure it'll make it two pours in the park, but if it does, I'll bring it. It's going to be delicious. Um, they're supposed to have me a date, I hope, next week or maybe later this week 
on when those will be bottled, but I think those will be August as well. But I may have them, I may have them wait till early September or September if all of those other ones are, are going to be ready. Like I don't want six barrels in August. Uh, Jared, if you and the family ever come to Tampa and need a free room, uh, appreciate it, man. Thank you. At the Hard Rock. I, we might just do that. I need to go down to Tampa and do some bourbon hunting. I got some cool stuff I could do there. So, Jared, send me a DM, man. That way, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll at least, because I never can remember who told me what. Uh, send me a DM on uh, Discord if you're over there, and I'll at least mark it so I can come back to the conversation if we get down to Tampa. Um, and so, we've got, well, we've got three barrels from them, from Short Barrel and Old Fourth. We've got four from um, Starlight and Rolling Fork, so that's seven of them. We've got, was it three things coming from Crittenton's? That's 10 of them. So what am I missing? There's another one we've done I'm forgetting about. I don't have the list in front. Oh, I think Kyle just sent me the list last week. So let me, let me pull that up and see what else I'm missing here. Um, see what else I'm missing right there. There's the... Okay, oh, the Clyde Mays. That's what I was missing. Uh, the Clyde Mays ones, they said August, September. So the problem is, is I may have just a ton of barrels August, September. Like we may just have way, I, I may lose my house because we're going to have like 10 barrels in, in August and September. And then October, we've got the Crittenton stuff coming. Uh, we just, we're, we've got a pick with Ben Holiday on the 16th of next month. The 22nd of next month, we've got 13th Colonies. Uh, we are having some conversations about maybe doing something with three cord um, via spillway, and we might be talking about a George Dickel pick with some of their leadership team. Don't know. That's been floated. I don't. I'm not the one doing those conversations. I don't know where those are, but that's kind of roughly where the barrel picks stand. Uh, Jeffrey, I don't know yet. It, it varies across the board, but say like the. The short barrel cash strength picks probably going to be about 80 bucks or so. Um, we're trying to find some cheaper stuff. So like some of the Crittenton stuff, like a Crittenton's bottled in bond, probably just 50 bucks. But like the actual store pick, because we're going to have some of the regular release stuff too of these, you know, because they don't have big distribution. You probably, most of y'all probably never had a Crittenton's. Um, so we'll have access to that. We'll probably have access to some regular short barrel that might be more, you know, more in that 50, 60 bucks range. And then we'll have the cash strength, which is going to be a little, um, little, you, you love it when I say anything with the WH in front of it. Do I emphasize the WH? Well, that's good. Did anybody figure out, I missed the chat move so fast. What's special about this, um, it definitely feels like it's got a little more oakiness than a normal Blanton's. The proof's the same though, but it definitely feels like there's more oak there. My favorite barrel will be empty, yes. You could drink wine all day. We might be getting into a little bit of wine, but I, I don't know, I'm probably never gonna be a wine guy. Uh, I thought the Sagamore's pretty good for a, I think it's a very bourbon friendly rye. So Justin, like, so they know that I am not a big fan of George Dickel and they said challenge accepted. That's what I was told via some folks that sent that word to them. They said challenge accepted, come up here, we'll roll out the red carpet, we're going to bring in the big guns, we're going to find a barrel of whiskey you're going to love. I don't know how that's going to go. Oh, I want to will it, but I will it like the problem with will it is, is I got no, I don't have enough clout to get a will. If somebody got, if somebody could tell will it how much clout we've got, if somebody could explain the clout to them, I would gladly, I would take a will it purple top in a heartbeat right now, but I mean, they're, tra they're following that traditional model, right? Where it's all about all the will it products you've sold. I'm the biggest fan of George Dickel. <sighs> <laughs> no. I've never tried the Lusty Claw. That bottle scares me. It's always, we call it the Dusty Claw because they're always like one's been sitting there for like two years everywhere I go. Because every, even the every, every liquor store I go to that's got it, I was like, what is that bottle about? They're like, eh, don't buy that. The liquor stores are telling you not to buy it. You know it's problems. Will it or won't it? You give me a purple top, it will. It will it. 
Ah, do you think about Rebel 100? Is it a decent bourbon? It's about $35 after I check. Yeah, Rebel 100 is pretty good. We've got a video coming out where I, I have a Rebel 100 from the 1960s. I have a current Rebel 100. We're going to blind those and try them. I have an old Fitzgerald from the 1970s and a modern old Fitzgerald. We're going to blind those and try them. I have an old Forester from the 1980s and a modern old Forester. So we're going to do a video of is older whiskey better? And we're gonna, I'm gonna drink a lot of that Rebel 100 at that point. Two additional years. Okay, so this one's two years older. Nice. I do have a Starlight Cigar Batch, yes. Amberana, way too much Amberana. Cash Strength 15 year old Dickel Tabasco Brusel Pick. I don't think that's gonna happen. I, I, honestly though, if they would let me try, if they will, I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna ask if I can try cash strength Dickel. I think they may take the, the Dickel and water it down and put it in the Tabasco. So it may not be a cash strength Dickel Tabasco, but if they have it, I'm gonna ask them if they'll let me try it. How do I have these? Just knowing people, man. That, that's what it boils down to, knowing people. Um, I'm not sure if this is available. I bought this in Georgia. So I'm not sure if it's in Alabama, but if you find all nations, Freaking buy it. All nations, reach out. Let's do something. I'm going to shoot a short on that. We'll see if we can get some views on it because that's good. Appreciate it, Michael Sharp. Thanks for the support, man, and hate that you're working late. Barstown Origin is a buy all day long. Um, I have an Origin somewhere, but I think it's put up. I need to get it out and try it. Where did it end up? Is it up? No, it's not up there. Um, I, my stuff is such a mess right now. I can't find anything. We've gotten out of hand. Get three, seven, five. I'm not going to buy a barrel of Tabasco, but I would like to try it. The blend straight from the barrel is the best one, for sure. Uh, Chris, the app is coming along very slow, unfortunately. So I talked to a UX designer. He's going to work nights and weekends to help us design it because I don't... All right, let me, let me start from the beginning for those that maybe don't watch the stream all the time or just got here. We are working on a bourbon hunting app. It is going to allow you to walk into a liquor store, scan the barcode on a bottle, find out all sorts of information about that bottle, reviews, you know, suggestions on whether or not we would think you would like it based on your reviews. If any of your friends are looking for it, um, you're going to be adding it to your selection. You're going to be able to say, is it open? Is it not open? How much, you know, how finished is it? Like you're going to be able to put notes. You're going to be able to rate it. You're going to be able to do all sorts of cool things. So a little bit social network, a whole lot bourbon hunting and inventory management. Um, that's what we're working on. We want it to be really good. I don't want to put out a mediocre app. It's got to be good. So I'm working with someone I trust, a UX designer. He's got to work nights and weekends. He's got a full-time job. He's working on his own app. He's got a lot going on. And so um, it's just going to take a while. Like it's just going, he, he's wanting, you know, four or five months to do the design work for it before we even start building it. We're going to try to shorten that timeline as much as we can, but it, it is going to be well on into next year before the app launches at the earliest, unfortunately, because we want it to be good and thought out before we, like I just, I could just start building something this weekend and throw some crap together, but it's got to be good. Matt Horn with the $10 Super Chat is down for that soft red. That is going to be so good at cash strength. I swear that is going to be, I, I just know the soft red wheat so good. The, the cash strength soft red wheat is going to be one of the best things I've had. This is the Japanese bottle. This is the Takara Red. So we've opened it up. That's what it's in my glass right now. So Takara Red has a slightly lighter label. Y'all probably can't see that. And then it has red writing. So this is a Takara Red Japanese um, Blanton's. And this is the first time I've ever tried it. Uh, can you get a tour of the selection one day? I mean, yeah, I guess. It's a mess right now though. So I don't know if I wanna show it, but someday when we get organized, we'll do a full tour. We're gonna move into the other room, have it all on display. Um, hopefully, I'm hoping uh, we've got a quote to finish the work in there to soundproof it and do all that stuff. I'm, I'm going to be gone a lot of August, so it'll probably happen in September. So I'm hoping by the end of September that room's done. And then we can move in by the end of September and start streaming in there and we'll be able to see all of the selection. 
Oh, the short barrel, Joseph, is going to... The short barrel might be the best barrel pick we have coming. Like, I do love the four grain for sure on Crittenton's, uh, the rolling fork rum, the... Um, you know, it's a lot of th that we got from Starlight. Some of the Starlight stuff's really good, but for my palate, that short barrel is just out of this freaking world. I'm not a big like malted whiskey fan, and and if I'm not mistaken, Habiki is a malt whiskey. Uh the the Von Payne is it's okay. It's it's a mixer. It's a good mixer. Um, I haven't figured out what to do with it yet. I probably just need to put it in a Coke and see what's up, or a Dr Pepper. The Brusel Bourbon Museum, they're all open. Ah, uh, if you had a Pappy 15, the thing about a Pappy 15 is, is it's really good whiskey, but you could trade that for a lot of bottles or a mortgage payment. So trade it for a Weller Antique 107 and a mortgage payment. Whiskey Shelf app, I've got quite, like there's a bunch of apps, I've looked at them. There are some that have some functionality that we want to provide, but there's none that do it all like we want to do, for sure. Uh, I'll probably pass through Dayton Wednesday or Thursday, but I probably won't stop. I'll probably just be rolling through, unfortunately. So uh, we do have some friends up there that were with us in the, in the bourbon hunting video, but it'll probably be a while before I get back to stay. How do you balance tasting, enjoying with not over consuming? Are we supposed to balance? That was a thing we're supposed to be. Uh, yeah, I'd, honestly, almost all of my consumption is on camera. Unless we have folks over, um, it's in, and that's infrequent with our travel schedules right now, with work schedules and things. Um, so it's almost all on camera. Like it's just, I wouldn't be drinking. I like. I didn't drink during the week at all before I started this, unless I was just trying a new whiskey for some reason. Uh, but get, I'm thinking about stopping in Cincinnati. I'm really thinking I'll drive up to Cincinnati on Wednesday um, and stop there on my way to um, Michigan. So I may be in Cincinnati on Wednesday. Weller 12? What did I say about Weller 12? I, don't, I didn't say anything about Weller 12. I don't, Paul, what did I, what did I mean? Oh, you're talking about, no, Weller Antique 107. Not, well, I get you. Ah, he's funny. Paul Paul watches the video. Either Paul just made he made he either made a joke without knowing it or he made a really funny joke. Took me a second to get it there, Paul. I, I think 107 is better than 12. So Willie, that's what Paul's referring to, I believe. Um I'd like 107 better than 12 normally as well, but in our blinds, we did a blind video where we ranked the entire Weller lineup and the Weller 12 came in above the 107. So um, I'm going to have to live with that the rest of my life, and I'm not sure how I'm going to do that. I have not been to a Texas Spec annual bourbon drop. This, this uh, Blanton's is actually really good. Um, I like the extra oakiness. I don't know if that necessarily makes it better, but... Uh, give a shout-out to who, Logan Man? To you? Well, shout-out, man. Thanks, Logan Man, for being here. Um, in Indy, I, I don't think my path carries us through, carries me through Indy. Like the fastest way, it's like 45 minutes. Um, if I don't go through Indy, I probably will be in Indy next year. We were there this past year, uh, or early, it's actually early this year for P, the PRI conference at work. Um, so we'll, um, take it easy, Logan. Uh, 13th Colonies. Yeah, two syllables, Sam. We'll, we're doing a 13th Colony pick on the 22nd. Party source. That's where I need to go. All right. All right, Nick Bolton. When I come through which, which area are you in there, Nick? I have not tried Maker's 46 cask. I'm not a big fan of Maker's 46. So I didn't, a lot of folks, I had two of them in my possession, but they weren't mine. Somebody left them for me for some of our little bourbon group to pick up. Um, Weller Foolproof is, you were right, uh, Deal Billy, Weller Foolproof is not good for lawnmowers. I can admit that my lawnmower will not start. I don't think it's the Weller's fault because I cleaned it out. We mowed grass all summer last summer after we poured Weller in it. But this summer, it will not start. I just hired somebody to do the grass because I'm gone. Need a Tennessee crew? I, it, well, so Big J-Rock, I appreciate the support there. We'll see. We will see. I don't know. Um, it's through, like if we do it, it's through Spillway. They may want to be there. So I don't know if we'll have any or some 
uh, spots available. So if it's my pick, like if I do the pick, I try to always take patrons. So if you want to be on these picks and, and ask J-Rock, J-Rock was on our pick at Short Barrel. The, some are fun. Some are, they're all fun. Some are fantastic. If they take you into the Rick house and do cool things. And, and honestly, we, with the growing of the channel, we have enough clout to where most of these places roll out the red carpet. Like they just do. It's a great place to be. Um, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't, I'm not too big from a britches. I don't think I'm anything special, but I'm just saying with the views we get, a lot of people roll out the red carpet. Not all of them do. The bigger the distillery, the less likely they are to do that. And George Dickel is a big distillery. So I do not know. But when it's my pick, like I have been in communication with folks, because sometimes we get picked like Spillway, our friends at Spillway love those guys. They hook us up with some cool picks. We've done that video hasn't dropped because those picks are not available yet. But we um, we did some picks with Starlight and things through them. Like we went with them, and Starlight's like, "What do you want to buy?" I was like, "I want to buy everything," and they let us do it. Um, I couldn't take people on that one because it's not my pick, right? I was just invited along, and I just so happened to be lucky enough to be able to tag along and and then also piggyback on some picks. Um, if we're in contact like Short Barrel and Thirteenth and stuff like that. We pick patrons. We put a poll out for folks that want to go. We allow people to submit and say, I, I'm available that day and I'm interested. And then we pick them um, based on, you know, patron tier, whether they've been on a pick before. You know, there's several criteria um, that we can post. And, and then you might be able to go and drink all the whiskey with us and help us make those picks. And it's, it's really, like, bourbon for me is much more about the experience than it is the whiskey. Like, I love... The people I meet, I love the places I go, I love the experience of bourbon more so than I like the bourbon. And so, and I like bourbon, don't get me wrong, but, you know, just being able to go do a barrel pick like that if you've never done one is an incredible experience. Bring back the e-commerce YouTube, Jira Wright says. We tried, we posted a couple of videos. We, we're going to be doing a lot of stuff, I think, on the big commerce front here soon. So we're gonna do do more and more of those, um, but we they'll, it'll be coming back. It's just time, right? We got a lot going on. This four gate I got from Maple Party Shop. This is the Kelvin collaboration I bought from Maple Party Shop uh, last week over in Columbus, Georgia. It would not be bigger than the Bourbon Channel, believe me. We did that channel for five years. So for those that don't know, we have a a work channel where we talk about e-commerce. And I had that channel for like five years. We had more subscribers and views in three weeks of doing the Bourbon Channel. Three weeks after the Bourbon Channel launched, it had more subscribers and views than the, than the e-commerce channel that we did for five years. Uh, I like a lot of the Larceny Barrel Proofs brand. Like a lot of them. I think they're really good. A lot more so than um, just regular Larceny. 1792 foolproof store pick is amazing. Nice there, Josh. I'm glad you like that one. Yeah, bourbon sitting in a window, sun on bourbon, no bueno. Don't do that deal, Billy. Um, if it has all of its unicorns sitting in a window for long periods of time, it's not healthy for them, I assure you. The heat, the sunlight is not healthy. I'm assuming they just rotate them. They don't leave them there for too long. But if they are, um, if they are doing that constantly, it's problematic. I appreciate it, Jared. We're, we're definitely wanna, we want to bring the e-commerce stuff back at scale, but we got to figure out how to provide value and also provide value for the business because it's got to pay for all the time that goes into it. Um, enjoying some Weller 107. Nice. Give the people what they want. What all nations? This is just all nations cask strength. This is Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey barrel proof, and it is... That's the, that's the highlight. That's the surprise. Like, that four gate's good. This, like, I expected that to be good, though. This is out of this freaking world. Like, oh, my God. New Jersey in the house, Chris. Any thoughts on the 2023 20, Maker's Mark? The blue label. That's the BEP, um, I believe. I had one. I liked it. I thought it was pretty good. Um, we had our little bourbon group come in, and Russell in our bourbon group absolutely loved it. And so I just kind of let him adopt it and take it home with him. And I wished I had it to try it right now because I did like it. I love the, the previous wood finishing series. 
I liked that one. It wasn't, I didn't like it as much as the FAE 01 or 02, but it was good, but now it's gone. So I abandoned it and it's been adopted. Um, appreciate it, Stowey. Thanks for the support. So straight bourbon has some requirements. I don't know them off the top of my head, but there are requirements around straight bourbon. Uh, somebody post those in the chat for me if you would. Uh, a favorite double oaked, it's got to be just Woodford double oaked. I think that's the best one. Uh, Peerless double oaked, I've got one. It's probably in the back, I think. Let's see. I had some Peerless. Oh, nope, there it is right there. Peerless double oaked, right, you We did just, we just tried the Costco bourbon there, Joe. Um, I thought it was pretty good. Like, I thought that was a pretty solid bourbon. It doesn't blow my socks off. It's not as good as that all-nation sitting right next to it, but it's good. Oh, Jack Daniels 10 is good. Jack Daniels 12 is exceptional. Um, yeah, I have the Willet Purple Top 9-year right there on the shelf. Sagamore, I haven't had the Sagamore Double Oak. Yeah, that's good. That is good. Um, I still think it's just under the Woodford double oak for me. I get more vanilla sweetness, and the oak is a little stronger on the Woodford to me right now. Like, my palate may be a little numbed after all these high-proof pours, but um, that is still an exceptional whiskey. I like it a lot more than when we first opened it, and I do like the regular Peerless, yes. Uh, if you picked up a nine-year Willet Purple Top for $200, Luke, you stole it. Because I think the MSRP on a nine-year is three fifty. dollars Like, literally, I think somebody just sent me that because we were having that debate. I, I didn't remember what they go for. And the nine-year is like $350 MSRP. Starlight has a double oak. I haven't had that one. Review all double oak. I don't know how many double oak I have. I tell you what's special, though is the one we had on the last live stream, which is the Double Double Oaked from Woodford. That is fantastic. Uh, if I love the profile of Wild Turkey 101 and Rare Breed, we'll want to find something similar that's more smoky oaky. So you want, like, to me, the Wild Turkey stuff has a little oak. It has, like, some interesting kind of... <sighs> What's the flavor I'm looking for there? I definitely get a little like cherry sweetness, maybe a little toffee on a wild turkey. Hmm, what would I do if I wanted that, but I wanted it more oaky? Maybe a Russell's? Hey, yeah, Russell's, absolutely. Like that, that's natural. What, what am I thinking? Um, try Russell's. Now, Russell's tends to have a little bit like dry oakiness instead of a sweet oakiness. Like this double oak, the Woodford double oak, more sweet oak to me. Um, Russell's comes with like a dry oakiness, but that's made by wild turkey. It's the same whiskey with more oakiness. So try 10-year Russell's. Um, I prefer maybe the Russell single barrel because you can get a little more proof on those. Big House full proof? I have not tried that. When's the short? I should have an answer this week, I hope. Definitely by next week on when the short barrel is going to drop. Uh, I talked to them today. That short, the short barrel pick's probably going to be 80-ish dollars. It might be 80, it might be 89.99. I'm still waiting on like confirmation of what it's gonna cost me landed, because I've got their price, but I've still got distributor cost and stuff like that I've gotta work through, but it's probably gonna be around there. Um, favorite toasted. I really like the Michters. I think the Elijah Craig toasted is also exceptional. Um, wouldn't what be Long Branch, Mike? Oh, you're talking about turkey, uh, more oaky? Yeah, but that's like that mesquite oak. That's not good. That's not good oak, though. You're right. You're right, but that's not good oak. Uh, I have not tried Old Kirk. I would love to. Upper Peninsula, stay at your Airbnb, save money for whiskey. Great places up there. I have an employee that spends a lot of time. He's from, like, um, Milwaukee area. I think they go up to the up. The UP, as they call it, um, quite often. I've never been, though. Uh, Penelope barrel strength is fantastic. It's my favorite Penelope, for sure. Being around Ohio will do that to you. What is the glass top Blanton's? Oh, it's none of them are glass top. 
Are you talking about this one over here? This one just, it just has plastic around it. Like these got shipped to me. Um, and so I just haven't, I hadn't pulled all the plastic off. I just threw them on the shelf. This is a Takara Black. So this is a Japanese, I believe, only release. It's definitely an overseas release of Blanton's. I think it's a 700 milliliter bottle. Um, and this one is at 80 proof. And then we just tried this one, which is the Takara Red, which is like two years older than a normal Blanton's, also uh, a release from overseas. I need a Trader Joe's. I don't, I don't have, like, there's no Trader Joe's around here. So if I see a Trader Joe's on my travels, I will stop at one and I will buy it. Layoff Ohio, <laughs> MSRP $201. I swear somebody told me it was three fifty. So you may be right. Um, why did the Booker's rep convince me the Apprentice batch was awesome? Then I get home and see all the negative reviews on it. Well, they want to sell things. Um, they want to sell things. Now I haven't had Apprentice batch. We did in the last bourbon hunting video. We did buy Booker's. The video said it was one hundred eighty dollars. It was not. They messed that up. It was a mistake. I was supposed to proof that. I missed the graphic. It was around a hundred ish dollars, maybe 110, 108, 110. Um, but that was not my, that was the latest release and it wasn't my, I owed uh, someone a bottle. So someone had come here and I was gonna go on a trip to pick up some bottles and I wasn't able to pick up enough. So I was like, I give you your money back. And they're like, just get me a Booker's. I was like, okay, I'll get you. Next time I see a Booker's, I'll grab one. So uh, 369 for a nine year purple top. It's so interesting, though. $13 Trader Joe's bourbon, and it's not a drain pour. That is a resounding um, review of Trader Joe's bourbon. It's not a drain pour. It's, pretty, it's, a, it's okay. It's called getting rid of the bookers. Exactly. Appreciate it, Danny. Thank you. What do I do for work? I'm, I'm in e-commerce. I build websites that sell things. So if anybody here has any influence over a website, an e-commerce merchant, or a merchant that needs e-commerce, well, that would sure help me pay for my bourbon budget if y'all, you know, need a little assistance. We do pretty good. We do a lot of, we do a lot of work for businesses in enthusiast-driven industries. So we do a little bit of bourbon stuff, um, but it's usually a lot of automotive, hunting, fishing, outdoor lifestyle, you know, stuff where the southern accent plays pretty well. That's the day job. Um, I have not seen Maker's DNA. I have not tried Stellum yet. Ah, uh, Lazy River. Have not. Old Forster. Oh, yeah. Old Forster 100 is really good. I don't know if it's best bang for the buck, but it is a good bang for the buck. Special reserve for 21 to buy all day, for sure. Uh, you need to be the first to know. Patrons will be the first to know. So when that short barrel drops, and we will let folks know when we expect it. So when we have, like, more firm dates... We will let patrons know. We'll we'll try to. I'm gonna now that we're starting to get some updates. I will try to update folks at least bi-weekly on when we're expecting them. Um, but you've got to be in the patron group to get those updates. Because what we don't want to do is necessarily just update everybody on a live stream and then have them jump in the patron at the last minute to take a bottle from somebody that's been a patron for a long time. Uh, so it depends on the release of the Russell's 13. Yes, all of them are overrated. Release two, the one I have, is okay. It's, it's decent. It's a good bottle. Not worth the hype. I had a different release. I don't know which release it was, but I had it in a bar in Orlando, and it was out of this world delicious. Still probably not worth the hype, though. Uh, my degree is a bachelor in science in computer science with a concentration in architecture. Um, I do love the Steel Austin cash strength, which is why we're doing a barrel pick with them on the 22nd, I think it is, of September. We're going to be out in Austin to do that barrel pick. What's my best bang for the buck? Uh, Evan Williams bottle and bond for like $17 here in Alabama, 20 bucks elsewhere. Wild Turkey 101 is, what, $25? That's a fantastic bottle. Rare Breed is 50-ish. Woodford Double Oak is, what, 40 to 60 depending on where you're getting it. The benchmark stuff at $25 is fantastic. Like, there's a lot of really, really good bottles. Uh, $800 for a purple top in Delaware? Eh, don't do that, man. Don't do that, Jonathan. Bubbles. I got I to gotta check out Bubbles in Kansas City. All right? I'll see if I can. Uh, what was the name of the bar in Orlando? 
it might have been the Capitol Grill right next to, we were at some hotel near the airport for a convention, and there's like a little shopping center right there, and we went into, it might have been the Capitol Grill we had it at their bar. I think it was like $20, $25 a pour. I don't know. I wasn't paying for it, so I didn't know. First bottle of Eagle Rare, Tristan. Congratulations. Bowman single for 50. Yeah, that's a good bottle for sure. I do need, we got a lot of bottle and bonds. That would be hard to do. $100 for a green top wallet. You could usually get them cheaper than that. That's going to be a four year ride. That's a whole different thing than the purple tops. Garrett with the $5 super chat. Love your videos. Got into bourbon due to your videos. Can't find a weller anywhere. Keep looking, Garrett. You'll find it. And I apologize. Uh, for making your um, wallet just a little bit lighter. Uh, Found North, haven't heard of it. At Point Orlando, there you go. Capital Grill at Point, Point Orlando. Now, this was two months ago, so I don't know if they still have it. Let's crack a fresh bottle. We just cracked two fresh bottles. Actually, three. These two and the Blantons we just cracked open. What time is it? We, we only got 20 minutes. So after this... After this, I'm going to jump into Discord for an audio chat for supporters. If you are a patron or if you join patron tonight, be sure to link your Discord to patron. Google how to do it. I don't know. Um, if you have any problems, like post in one of the chats and tag me. I'll try to get to it, but I probably won't get to it tonight. Um, but we'll go for another hour over there in Discord and uh, just like everybody can talk. It's not just me talking at folks. So be sure to join that. Um, so what are we going to drink? We got 20 more minutes. We will crack something fresh open or something old. What am I drinking? Y'all give me some ideas. Y'all hit me up with something. George T. Stagg at Nulu Evergreen. Nice. $1,800 for a will at nine years? No, Cameron. No, 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 no. Good smoke. That well at Cahiba was good. I did like it. Uh, I like Campfire. I think it's pretty good. Nothing wrong with Bud Light, but I don't have one, Eric. What's the oldest bottle? So, like, oldest bottle as in how long I've had the bottle. I have a, I have a uh, 1968 Rebel 100. Old Elk Cigar. You don't do that to me, Calvin. We were drinking that Sagamore Cask earlier. Noble Double Oak. I don't think I have that. Uh, J.P. Mattingly. Don't know. Oh, the Jack 12 so good. I had a Waythin single barrel, but it got drank. Let's drink, revisit the Russell's Reserve 13. I think that's pretty good. I don't think I have a new, I, I might have a new Lou, but honestly, if it's in the back at this point, I'm not going to be able to find it, and I don't have a warehouse. See, y'all y'all overestimate my selection here just a little bit, but um, all right, so we'll go to the Russell's Reserve 13. I don't have a Noah's Mill. Smoke Wagon is good. Oof, I don't have Maker's 46 cask. Jill isn't here to say no. She'll be down here in about a minute once I do that for sure. Um, so let's, um, I'm going to grab the rebel 100 is good. I'm going to do the Russell's 13. Then we'll finish with the rebel 100. It's been a while. And I like the rebel 100 cause it's been a while since I've done that. I don't drink that one often. You do have a Mattingly. It's four left of your old cater, old Carter. A Mattingly. Oh, Jay Mattingly. Yes, 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 yes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Did you say Jay Mattingly? I thought you said like, I thought you said something else other than Jay Mattingly. Sorry, I must have misread the letters. You're right, those are good. It's been a while, I do need to try those. So I may, I may try three here before we get out. Sell a kidney for a will of, don't do that, don't do that. So we might, we might, we might be giving away a 10 year will at Purple Top at some point in the future, but you might have to show up in Mississippi to get it. Like I don't make the rules. Like I we're so the the folks over at Spillway in Mississippi did a Willet ten year purple top pick. And I I was able to go with them and we're gonna do an event at their place when that pick is ready. So it'll probably be sometime in the fall. And I may give away the opportunity to be first in line to buy it. So you might you might have to buy it, but you'll be able to buy it pretty cheap. Or we might even give it away. I don't know, we'll see. Don't try to keep up with me on a Monday, Ryan. Don't do it. That is a really good whiskey. It's got a little too much oak. And it's 13 years old, so you expect a little oak, but Russell's, to me, 
the oak is just dry. It's a dry oak that I don't usually love. Now, this is probably not, not too much more dry oak than I get on a tin, but the cast strength, it's really good. But there's just a little too much of that dry oakiness, whereas the one I had at the restaurant that was a different release had more sweetness and a little bit less dry oakiness. And so it just had so much more balance and complexity to it than this one does because the dry oakiness just takes away from it a little bit. It's still a really good bottle of whiskey, but not something I would just go too far out of my way for, whereas the other one I had is definitely something I would look for. Ah, uh, Hancock Bourbon Review. Uh, Lord, I do have a Hancock. Um, I'll, I'll give you the Hancock review because we were just drinking that the other night. Somebody wanted to try it. It may have been the last live stream. I'm not sure where we opened that one. Uh, it's good. It really varies from single barrel to single barrel. I like the flavor. It's that traditional Buffalo Trace flavor profile, but the proof is even lower than a Blanton. So it's good, but I don't think it's any better than a Blanton's most of the time. I have heard folks say they get really, really good single barrels from that sometimes though. All right, so let's try this Rebel 100. I do have a few Rebel. I've got a, ma a distiller's collection Rebel. I've got a 10-year-old Rebel. And then, oh, my belly's hitting stuff. It's still a mess over there. I got a bunch of glasses that have been dried. Um, and then we're going to hit that J Mattingly, and we're going to call it a day. I'm going to do the Mattingly. Don't worry. I'm going to do, don't worry, don't worry. Simmer down now. Simmer down. Can a bourbon be aged too long? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Lots of bourbon, like I think that Russell's 13 is too old, or at least it's too much oak. Um, like an Elijah Craig 18, I like it, but man, is that just kind of dry oakiness. Um, so don't love it, but it's too old. Like Pappy, 15, pretty good. It's got a hint too much oak for me. Like it's just a little more oak than I want. I think the 12 would probably be the best pappies if they drop it at 107 proof. Anything older than the 15 pappies, way too much oak. So to me, 12 years in Kentucky, now it depends on where it's aged at, but in Kentucky, 12 years is about the perfect. Take it easy traveling with the Taylors. Lot B, yeah, the 12 year, that's what I said, right? I didn't say, rip, yeah, Lot B. That's good. It's not particularly complex. Um, the flavors are not really super intense, but it is a nice, soft, sweet, fruit-forward, weeded bourbon right there. So I like the Rebel 100. I feel like my cork is a little loose, but it, it's not coming out. Like it's, I don't understand how that works. Like it, it's got a little movement, but then it's not completely I may pull it halfway out so it seals because it's like a little loose, but then the bottom of the cork, I don't know, it may be drying out. I may need to do something about that. So, Jimmy, if I have time and I'm doing research on a liquor store, I look at their Google local reviews, maybe Facebook, um, and see if, you know, what their reviews are. If anybody mentions allocated bourbon or they posted pictures of it. Other than that, it's it's really just a crapshoot. Like it's honestly, I don't think I've ever found a store with great online reviews or somebody that posted pictures that actually had them at decent prices. Sometimes I've been able to negotiate, but it really is just walking into a store and having a conversation. Like you just don't know. It's a lottery. It's a lottery. That's what it is. Take it easy, Nick. Just drink it fast. Yeah. This is the 10 year Rebel, which I've only had one pour out of this bottle. I've had it for about a year. Yeah, the 90 proof on the Lot B never made sense. Not at all. Oh, that's pretty good. This is a single barrel Rebel. That is so, Jesus Christ. I know we gotta have that Mattingly before we get out of here, but I'm gonna need a little better pour of that one right there. Pappy, good. It is best for trading. Like it holds a lot of value. So if you get one for a hundred bucks, then you know it is what it is. Yes, I have the Hudson New York yellow and white colored bottle. Um, 
And I'm glad you liked it because it wasn't great for me. Billion dollar, geez, I need a mega millions. I'm feeling lucky. That is a good whiskey right there. What's the proof on that? This one, wow, okay. So this one, is, it was aged since 0206. So is this a 2016 bottle? I bought it last year. It must have been sitting around for a while. Um, from Lux Row, obviously. This is 100 proof. So this is also 100 proof. I like that. Um, it's got just a little more oakiness, a little more interest to it than the Rebel Yale 100. Uh, the Waythans I've had has been so long ago, I need to go back to it. So, a reasonable price on what, Joseph? I don't, on the tent, I, I, like, I don't know. I'm bad about reasonable prices because I'm, I'm kind of cheap. Honestly, I spend a lot on whiskey, but then I think they're all overpriced. Ten years always, been, ten years probably one of yeah. I, so I like the complexity on fifteen a little more than ten, but the oak takes away from it a bit. Uh, what's my thoughts on John Emerald? They make a pretty good single malt. Um, their bourbon stuff is not up to par yet, but they're working on some stuff right now that'll probably be out in about three years because it's it's kind of a new endeavor that's actually going to be really good. So I'm proud of what he's doing, um, and I support him in any way I can. But like. The good stuff from him is yet to come. Um, I do have a Rocktown single barrel. I'm not sure it's cash strength, um, but I don't I don't know about the black label columns. Like, I don't know. I haven't had a ton of stuff from Rocktown. I've got one bottle that was a store pick. I didn't love it. I want more from Rocktown, though. So, Rocktown, hit me up. Send me some samples. Somebody send them this clip right here. Say, hey, dude, he wants some sand. I do. They reached out to us on Instagram. I think we may have let the ball drop. I was traveling. I don't think we followed up properly, but I would really like to try more of their stuff. I thought what I tried with that store pick was good. It was just a little too oaky, but that's probably on the store that picked it, not them. Oklahoma Outdoors got into bourbon after watching your videos. I've officially fallen in. I, I apologize, man. I'm so sorry to get for getting you into the rabbit hole. Um, I do notice a lot less super chats without Jill in here. That's what I've noticed. That's a lot less super chats. Do y'all like it? Do y'all like it where we do these, where I just read the chat? Like when it's her and I, and she does a great job. Jill's wonderful in these streams. She just walked by. Uh, but it's a little, little bit of conversation between us. And then we try to keep up with the chat. With this, I mean, I can't keep up with the chat, but I'm just trying to, I signed up, I signed up 10 patrons for this. That's awesome. Uh, Buckner's third. I, I tried a Buckner's at an event last week. I thought it was pretty good. When am I coming to Kansas? Um, I don't know if Kansas is on this road trips. So we're about to, we're about to go on a road trip. So I'm not sure. This is Spitfire. Is this live? Yes. This is, you just thought this was a video. Um, did she get new glasses? I don't think so. The wife is like, I love Jill. Don't, we're not judging if you like it with or without Jill. I'm more, I'm more thinking, do you like it with one person where we're just hitting up the comments here? A lot less figgy water, Fiji water? Okay, I was like, Fig I think Fiji is spelled with a J. Chad has, been, Chad has been a little over the top tonight, but that's great. I love it. The Buckner's 15s. Okay. Uh, I don't think I've tried Breckenridge. New York road trip. We had talked about it. We were trying to set it up for later this year. I just don't think it's going to happen. I think it's going to be next year. Uh, the best states for hunting. It varies. Like I, the, probably the most fun I've had so far has been Arkansas, but it was the people, um, more so than the bourbon I got, right? It's just like talking to store. Like it was a place where there were a lot of store owners. I liked Orlando. Tom at that first store we went to in Orlando had a blast with that guy. Um, so I'm more interested in that. Like the bottles are great. Somebody asked me today, I, I get to ask this question a lot. A lot of people are like, what bottles are you looking for? And so I, I can tell them some high-end bottles, and oftentimes I'll get them. But realistically, I'm not looking for any bottles. I have all the bottles I need. What I'm interested in is meandering through life, having a good time, and enjoying the whiskey I find. And if, you know, that's really, I'm not looking for anything. Obviously, I want the high-end, hard-to-find, allocated stuff so I can try it 
and tell y'all whether or not I like it, but it's just like, I'm okay with whatever whiskey I find. We need to, oh, okay, Eric. So we need an all Jill streams, what you're saying. We should do that. If I'm going through Tulsa, Oklahoma, coming by you, Luke, make sure you're in Discord. Hit me up. I'll see. I don't know if we're going through Tulsa, but if we do, I'll, I'm happy to stop. Whew, that's been a while, sugar. Um, you're going to have to check that video. I don't, I don't even remember. I have not been to Maryland at all, much less bourbon hunting. So, what's, yeah, got an access this summer for the first time and love the entire experience. Um, I mean, you, you're talking about like real hunting? Interesting, trading some bottles for a Koi Hill. I mean, we can't talk about things like this on stream, but probably, probably. Chattanooga, North Georgia. Absolutely. Going to have to. Appreciate you showing up, Ron. Where's Lisa? She's gone. I th she went upstairs. I, don't th I thought she would show up for a minute. I thought she would say hello, but it appears as though that's not going to happen. Let me get this Jay Mattingly down. And then don't forget, Discord, you get access to the live um, like voice chat we're going to do here after this with everybody. And then you also get access to the store picks that we are working on here we got, we might have, I don't know yet, I don't have confirmation, but we may have like eight bottles in August, September um, of store picks. So bring my checkbook when I come to California. What, they don't take credit cards. Is that what you're saying? Purchase knob? Don't know anything about that. Take it easy, territory. Ah, oh, the Redwood Empire cash drink's delicious. I did that on the last stream, though. Benny's just got their new Knob Creek pick. I might have to check that out when I'm passing through Chicago. John Stevens with the $5 Super Chat. Love the content. Sipping on some new early times. Awesome. No word from Frey Ranch. I've tried. I have exhausted all contact opportunities with Frey Ranch. And I have heard nothing. I tried connecting with them on LinkedIn. I've done everything I could. I don't want to be rude. Like, I don't want to be that guy that where they're like, I don't want, I'm not interested. It doesn't matter to us. Just get in line like everybody else. But I like I don't I don't at this point I don't know what to do. So so you know, if anybody's got any contact with Frey Ranch, I'd love to do something. One of my favorite bottles I've gotten in the last year or so has been from Frey Ranch. But I also I'm not gonna push where we're not welcome. So the Von Payne, the Von Payne's a mixer. It's good, but it's a mixer. Don't know what to do with it. I do have an old elk cigar cut. It's Amberato finished. It's too much cinnamon for me. Too much Amberato. Who are the distilleries we're working with? Well, like I said, we've got Clyde Mays store picks coming. We've got Old Fourth short barrel store picks coming. We've got uh, Starlight store picks coming. Crittenton's out of Mississippi. Ben Holiday, Old Fourth, still Austin. Uh, Rolling Fork Rum pick coming. Those are the ones we're working with at this point. I'm probably going to pause just a bit on getting new picks just to see how some of these sell. Uh, but honestly, if August and September go well, it looks like we're going to have a lot of picks available if those actually sell out. And we're waiting to release the videos of me going to do those picks so that everybody has act everybody sees it. And if patrons don't take them, we we got more you know more folks that might be interested in them to make sure they sell before we go overboard. But honestly, if all these picks we've done so far sell out fairly quickly, so that I don't lose my house. We're going to go crazy on store picks. Like, next year is going to be nuts. Yeah, I'm going to be passing through Denver here in about a week and a half. Um, do I like it? I haven't really tried a lot of West Coast. I mean, I like um, Redwood Empire, Lost Monarch, Redwood Empire. like that one. That's what I was thinking. Smoke Wagon's good stuff. Frey Ranch. I mean, that's, that's Nevada. That's what we were just talking about. Um, other than that, I haven't tried a ton from the West Coast. Take it easy, Damon. Let me get this um, Jay Mattingly Flapjack. So when I tried this for the first time, now it's been a while, but when I tried this, I was like, this bottle right here tastes like a Stag Junior to me. Like if somebody had handed me that pour and said that pour right there is a Stag Junior, I'd have been like, I believe it. Uh, hit me up at Albuquerque. We went through Albuquerque on some picks here not too long ago. This one is, uh, again, flapjack, and its proof is 100 and, what is that? That is really small. They write this stuff. Who writes? I don't even have, I can't write my handwriting that small. 
That is 125 proof. So 125 proof, Jay Mattingly. And it's still kind of, it probably doesn't have the sweetness that I would expect on a stag at this point. Yeah, it's not like my palate's probably got a little better. And this one's been pretty close to empty, so it might be a little oxidized. Um, I would say, yeah, that's not a stag. Not as good as the stags I've got open right now for sure. That is very kind of burnt caramel forward. Um, still delicious though. That's still a pretty interesting bottle, but it is very much just burnt caramel. Yeah, Frey Ranchers are all over the place. I have Frey Ranchers. I want to do a store pick with them. Like I want to come to the distillery. I want to film a video. We've reached out. Like I, that's all I can tell you. I don't, I don't know. I'm going to try a different. I got an approach that's worked at a couple of places. I'm going to try it with Frey this week. I'm tomorrow morning. I'm going to try that approach. We've went with the sending them a DM on Instagram and that has worked with us so far. And I'm going to do that and see what happens. Um, I don't know which stags I have. I, I think I've got two open right now. Um, the two I have open right now are 131 proof and 130.2 proof. And I think I got another one as a backup somewhere. I don't even freaking know. Um, but Jill did, did love, I mean, I love that Frey Ranch. That was a fantastic bottle. So I need the, I need the Bruzel Frey Ranch pick too, man. I need like, so I got like six of them. They're all backed up. Oh, this was All Nations. All Nations was the highlight of this stream. I've got to film some shorts tomorrow, and they are going to get a glowing review. So hit the like button on that video. Let's get their attention, because if they're putting out whiskey like that, we might could do something with them. That would be cool. Uh, the Green Label RD1 have not. Would I do a store pick with All Nations? Absolutely. And Frey Ranch. Like, that's what we're looking for. But, yeah. Uh, the one I love was a liquor lineup store pick. I think we've still got the bottle back here, so it's almost empty. So we've got we've got several bottles. I think I've got four or five bottles from Frey Ranch. Uh, this is the one. It's got this liquor lineup sticker here. I, let's see if I can hold on just a second. I'm going to switch to this other view here that's a little My bit My name is TJ here. Gamble, and this is Bruce. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Um, where's the, hold on just a second. I've got a zoomed in version that doesn't, uh, that's, Lord have mercy. This is trouble. Anyway, don't look at the leaderboard. Yeah, that one. It's got that on the back, right? So it's like the Vegas, like the kicking cowgirl, Frey Ranch store pick from Liquor Lineup. So this is, um, 136.36 proof, is that right? Lord have mercy, that's incredible. Uh, good whiskey though. Maybe they asked ahead of time, like I don't know. I don't think, I don't know. I think they may have done one with a charity, but I don't know if it's, like I don't know. I don't know, other people have more clout than us. That's what happens, it's cool. Um, I've never had Guinness from like a proper Guinness shop from the tap. Knob Creek 12 is great. Love it. Yeah, pick up Knob Creek. If you haven't had Knob Creek 12, give it a try. Uh, yes, David, I have tried the Starlight Distillery Cigar Blend. Wasn't a huge fan. It's Amberana finished. Way too much Amberana in the one I've got. So, Royce, just let me know. Call me every once in a while and just check, you know, check in with me on your boycott of Frey Ranch out and, like, pick it out in front with bruisal signs until they give us a store pick. Scoflaw out of Atlanta is who puts out All Nations, the story of Carrie. Like, I don't know anything about the story. A, a waiter at a restaurant told me this was his favorite bottle, so I bought it when I went to a liquor store in Columbus. And it's, it's fantastic. Like, I love it. All right, guys, we are going to jump over into Discord, and we are going to do a voice chat for folks that are supporters. So if you're a supporter, if you're in patron, if you're a channel member here and you're not a part of that, uh, tag me in the Discord somewhere. Like if you're in Discord, or if you're in Patron, 
You should be able to link your account and then jump in there. You just have to Google how to do that or figure it out. I don't know. Um, if you're a channel member here on YouTube and you want to be in that, you're going to have to tag me or tag Will or tag Shred, uh, and somebody's going to have to add you. I probably won't get to it tonight because I'll be in that voice chat paying attention to that. Um, we will not live stream next week, but I think there's a chance. He said yes, but I was putting a lot of public pressure on them. I'll try to get confirmation this week. A two weeks from today, I'm hoping to be in Colorado at Matt Porter's house from ADHD Whiskey. He and I will be streaming on this channel two weeks from today. Is my expectation. We will see if that actually happens. What's going on, Jill? You want to say hello to everybody? Hello. Are you just going to wave? You're waving at me? Yep. You're not even talking? They can't hear you. Jill says hello. So appreciate everybody joining. Had a good time. Y'all take it easy. We will see y'all in two weeks, hopefully, with a little guest surprise here. Um, and so we'll uh, catch up with all y'all later.